All right, so now we're back. I'm sitting down with Pollyanna. She's the founder of the Be Glad Movement. Um, definitely wanted to touch base with her since her name is after one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, like I said, she the founder of Be Glad Movement, found on IG. Um, and she just been interviewing different people that have overcome negatives in their lives and been able to transmute them into positives. So today we're gonna ask her of some of the ways that she has transformed some negatives in her life and some experiences that she has been able to take away from the people she's been interviewing. Cool, so how you doing today, Polly? I'm really good, thank you, Lorenzo. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your show. I'm really excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited and honored as well, especially with a name like Pollyanna. Um, so just to really ask you and to express to the people that are listening and may not even grasp uh, the origin or the definition of your name, where did, you, where did your name come from? What's the meaning of it to you? Okay, so um, my mum chose the name Pollyanna after watching the Disney film Pollyanna with Hayley Mills in. And the story, it's actually a much older story um, written by a lady called Eleanor Porter. And she, Pollyanna is a little girl who is, um, she's orphaned and sent to live with her auntie. And unfortunately, um, yeah, her, her parents were missionaries, but before they died, her dad taught her how to play the glad game. So essentially she looks for positives in negatives like you already said so the uh, the the scenario in the book was when the, her parents were still alive her dad really knew that she wanted a dolly and he asked for one to be sent a second hand one to be sent in uh, the missionary barrels but the um com uh, the um the message got mis mixed up somehow along the line and they got sent a crutch so random thing to be sent and um her dad said okay well what can we be glad about in this scenario and what they came so simple what they came up with at that moment was well at least we can be glad that we don't need a crutch you know we're we're both healthy and well and we don't need a crutch um and so that's sort of where it begins um and then her, uh, yeah very sadly her parents passed away she gets sent to live with her aunt um and it's quite a sort of um, down and out township they're all a bit grumpy and so she sets about teaching people how to play the glad game which really is just looking for uh, positives and negatives so whatever's going on however bad it may seem that you can always find something to be glad about um, and I think that's such a timely thing right now um, as you know we're all on lockdown because of the coronavirus and uh, can't go about our daily business as we usually would so trying to find things that we can be grateful for is um, is a big asset when you know so much change is going on at the moment. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. That's what's up. I always have said that it's people in first defining themselves are able to define themselves by the most easiest thing that they hear the most common, which is their name. So I'm sure you've had. Uh, upbeat and glad times throughout your your lifetime do you play the uh, be glad game or oh yeah it's something that my mum installed in me from a very young age so if ever anything went wrong in my life my mum would say now come on Polly play the glad game and I'd have to list off everything that I was um, lucky to have in my life and that I was grateful for and all the positives that I could see in that negative situation but it wasn't, um, it wasn't that she wasn't allowing me to, to feel down because I think it is important that we acknowledge when we have these down times. Um, it was about, okay, this bad thing has happened, but don't forget, you've got this bedrock underneath you, this uh, grounding of goodness that you can always refer back to. And then when you're ready, reach again for whatever it is that you want to go for next. It wasn't sort of like, Oh, let's just pretend that bad stuff doesn't happen because right. I don't think that's a healthy thing to do. You have to allow yourself to have a bit of a pity party, 
have a day eating biscuits and watching Netflix. You have to sort of get that out of your system. And then when you're ready, that's when you sort of say, okay, that was bad, but I've got all this good stuff and I can move on. I can, I can reach for something else now. So that was her way. I mean, it's funny now, because now that I'm so much older, if anything bad happens to my mum, I'll be, <laughs> she'll be like, oh, Polly, this happened. And I'll say, now, come on, mum, play that. And she goes, I know, play the blinking girl I play. <laughs> so uh, we kind of just remind her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's something that I've used throughout my life um, for big things and for small things, you know, for really silly little things like, you know, you're driving down the road and you get stuck behind a tractor or something um, and I'll be telling myself, okay, I'm late for this meeting, but maybe this tractor is here to stop me having an accident further down the road or something, you know, and... uh, just sort of using it in a way to always sort of try and think of positive scenarios rather than negative scenarios. But it doesn't always work, you know. Um, my, uh, the biggest thing that sort of pops into my head, my parents um, divorced when I was six. And um, so obviously my mum always taught this to me and she tried to teach it to my brothers as well. I've got older brothers that are twins. Um, and when my parents divorced, because they were three years older than me, and so they were like nine when my parents divorced, and it hit them a lot harder than it did me. Um, and my mum sort of tried to get Joe to play the glad game, and, and she said, now, come on, Joe, not everybody, you know, you're very lucky. Not everybody's got two bikes. You've got a bike at daddy's house and a bike at mummy's house. And he was like, yeah, mum, but I can only ride one of them at a time, <laughs> you know. So, it, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. And as you know, if, if you're determined to be in a negative mindset, you can always, our minds are very clever. They kind of uh, focus, what they believe on, they kind of focus on and they will gather more evidence to back it up. Yeah. Um, our brains are like Google. So you type into Google, um, 10 reasons why I should eat avocados every day. And it will give you all the health benefits. But if you type into Google, 10 reasons why I shouldn't eat avocados every day. It will tell you why you shouldn't. So our minds are the same. Like once you've had this idea, uh, you start seeing information that backs it up. So I don't know if you've ever been in the scenario where um, your neighbor gets a new car and it's like, I make a model that you've never heard of before, but suddenly because it's on your radar, you start seeing it everywhere, you know, and you've never noticed it before, but because you've now got a point of reference, you start noticing it. And and our minds are just so clever like that. And you really, if you've been brought up in a negative way, you kind of have to train your brain to to start looking for positive scenarios. And it's it's hard work to begin with, you know, it can feel very draining, Um, but it's just like physical exercise, mental exercise is the same. You don't just go to the gym and walk out looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have to, keep practicing, keep going, go through the pain barriers, build that muscle up, that mental muscle of goodness to, um, to really sort of install a, a, a positive attitude in yourself. And I know I'm gabbling on, but um, the other issue we have is that our brains are, um, are wired. They, we've, we've got like a natural negative bias. So, um, and it comes from sort of prehistoric times when um, we'd have to run away from a saber-toothed tiger or whatever it was that was going to try and kill us. And so uh, our brains are always looking for danger, always looking for the negative, um, and really to be able to combat that. You know, if everything's okay, everything's okay. Um, and you kind of think, this is all good, I don't need to worry about anything. But our brains are looking for that negative. Um, and as soon as they spot it, they home in on it. What can I do to solve this problem? actually in the grand scale of things it might not be a huge problem compared to all the good stuff that you've got going on and I think especially us in the in the western world are quite guilty of this that we've got it so good that when something happens like coronavirus and we're all stuck indoors and like oh this sucks but we forget hey you've got running water you've got a roof over your head you've got amazon deliveries and and uh, grocery deliveries actually this isn't a big inconvenience compared to what a lot of people have to put up with um, right. and I'm not saying you need to just be 
like grateful for what you've got. Well, yeah, be grateful for what you've got, but don't be, I'm not saying you need to be grateful for your, what you've got and not reach for more. You know, it's good to have goals. It's good to persevere and, and, and chase your dreams. Um, but gratitude, I think gratitude can quite often get, um, a, ba a bad name, you know, for the goal setters and the goal getters, they're like, I don't want to be grateful with what I've got. I want to get more. I want, I need this. I want the yacht. I want the, um, big house and all that kind of thing. And I'm not saying you can't want those things, but if you build from gratitude, it, right. again, going back to what my mum used to do, if you remember um, that actually you've got it good, you've got everything you need, you are safe, you're well, you've got food in your tummy, TV license, all that kind of thing, you know, you're safe. That actually gives you that bedrock to build from because then when you get the knocks, you know that you've got it all sorted anyway. You've got the basics sorted. You've got your, your human needs sorted. And then you're stronger. By, by keeping that gratitude, it makes you stronger to be able to go for the other stuff as well. And, and then it doesn't matter so much if you don't get it first time around, second time around, third time around, you know. That's cool. So, so in preparing for this interview, I did look your name up just so I could be better intelligible with my questions and see um, where the origins come from. And then looking up your name, it said that in, like you were saying, like the Western world or a lot of people would consider Pollyanna as a derogatory word or something or a person that is considered overly um, optimistic and sometimes even naive. Can you touch base on that? Like, what, what do you, from your POV and perspective, what do you think is the reason that people would think that being optimistic or, as you're saying, looking for and recognizing the positives in a perceived negative situation would be derogatory? Mm. So I think I find that mostly in the States, in America, um, and actually, it was quite funny. I um, I was living in Ithaca in upstate New York for a year during my sandwich year part of my uni course. I was studying interior design um, and I sliced my finger open and needed stitches. So Alison, the secretary at this architectural practice, took me off to the hospital to get stitches. And as the doctor called me through, she went, Pollyanna, were your parents sick or something? Like, listen, I was like, <laughs> I was what 21 at the time and I was like didn't know what to say really um but she's not the only person that sort of said that to me what were your parents thinking when they called you Pollyanna um and I think it's because of the film people have um and the book people have just taken away the optimism element and so the reason it's sort of morphed into a derogatory term you know I hear people saying I follow a coach called Marie Forleo, who I, I love, and um, uh, she even said in one of her videos, oh, you know, I don't want to be Pollyanna about this. Um, and that's sort of a case of, I don't want to wear rose-tinted glasses. I don't want to um, paint a picture that's not true. This is going to be hard. You're going to have to work hard, that kind of thing. Um, and I think it just comes from people have taken away the optimism part, but they haven't taken away the fact that actually Pollyanna was quite a realist. So um, I know that sounds like a funny thing to say for those people that do see it as a word, a derogatory word for someone who's um, overly optimistic or naive. But actually, she was a realist because what she did was she didn't say, oh, no, the bad stuff doesn't exist. She was like, OK, well, the bad stuff exists, but I'm going to choose to focus on the good stuff. You know, I'm going to choose to focus my mind on what's going to make me feel good not what's going to make me feel bad because when we start focusing on what makes us feel bad because our brains have that um ability to just home in and back up our thoughts we then go and find more evidence more evidence more evidence and then all of a sudden everything's terrible you know yeah. um so it is a real case of training our brains to make sure that we look for positives in negative situations and it doesn't even have to be a big negative situation. Just keep training your brain to look for nice things, you know, 
Um, I'm very fortunate here in the UK that um, where I'm living at the moment, we do have a back garden and we are able to go for walks around the village. Um, I've got a boxer dog called Brunel. And, uh, you know, going for a walk with him, he's awesome because his, um, his attitude to life is, hey, I want everybody to love me, you know, and he's sniffing out interesting things. And so uh, he'll go and run into some long grass and butterflies will come up and, you know, just hearing the birds. And I know that sounds all very cheesy, but it's, it's a real sort of uh, privilege to notice those things because nowadays we're always plugged in. We're always... I mean, I'm guilty of it. I, lo I lo really love listening to audio books and podcasts. And um, so when I am walking him, I quite often am listening to other stuff. Um, but the times when I don't, when I don't take my headphones, when I switch off and I just allow myself to absorb what's going on around, um, rather than absorbing social media and messages, because we're bombarded with messages all the time about how we should think and feel. Um, and actually to switch off from all of that and tune into your own instincts um, and, and appreciate your own surroundings is such a, a great thing to do because, you know, I, um, I don't think I mentioned this to you before in our previous conversations, but I, um, I do life coaching. That's okay. my main job. And um, I quite often find that people come to me with these goals that they've set themselves um, and they're goals that are based on what they've seen online, based on what other people are doing, based on what they think they should be doing because of what other people are doing and comparing themselves to other people. And they haven't taken the time to really get to know themselves mm. first. Uh, so a lot of what I do is stripping that back, you know, why do you want to do this? How are you going to feel once you've achieved this? Why do you want to feel that way? What is it that you're, what gap are you actually trying to fill? with this goal that you've come to me with because you know you've also told me that you're really good at this that and the other but that isn't attributed to what you're trying to achieve and is that your natural skill set and will that really make you happy you know so um yeah i've gone off on a massive tangent no, that's, so no, that's, that. good. that's good that's good because <laughs> that shows me exactly what i i tell people, I talk to people about, and especially even um, exemplify on this podcast that words are powerful. And the number one word and the first word we normally learn and identify with is our own names. And I always encourage people to be motivated and finding and living up and defining for yourself your own name. If it's a name that you don't really like, you can always change it. So that's cool, Polly. So let me ask you this then. What, since your name is Pollyanna, describe to me one of the times that you have had to use your Pollyanna um, name and exercise um, to really transform that negative experience into a positive one. I guess the best um the best way to describe i mean it like i was saying before i use it all the time for all scenarios big and small you know my parents divorce growing up um boyfriends coming in and out of my life and um i used to have a, a different business which was an interior design business was my first business that i set up and um that all went horribly wrong i was overzealous um and uh, young and thought I knew it all and I went big rather than starting small um, but that now that I reflect on that that was a learning curve even though um, the, the, the business essentially folded um, it was a massive learning curve um, but the best example I guess I can really give is when um, my husband he's my husband now but when we first started dating um, my husband was sent off to Afghanistan mm. and um, it's very difficult when they're over there because you can't like we were lucky where he was based um it, we were able to email quite regularly uh but telephone calls i could i could ring and leave him a message um but he wouldn't he would just pick that up the next time he was able to get to a phone um but if he rang me it could be any time of day or night and and i was basically like sleeping with my phone I always had my phone with me um, but quite often, you know, I'd have it in my coat pocket and I'd be off down the high street or doing a job or whatever. Um, and then I'd realize that I'd missed a call from him. 
and it would be devastating. I mean, it sounds so silly now, but at the time, because I was going months and months without seeing him, it would feel devastating. Um, especially because we were at that beginning stage of our relationship, you know, when everything, that honeymoon period where everything's really sweet. Um, it's still sweet now, don't get me wrong. I'm actually um, 18 months pregnant with our second son. At the, oh, I don't know that it's a son. I don't know why that came out of my, I've got a little boy already. Congratulations. Our second child. Um, so I guess yeah that's sort of the the way I kind of reconciled that was okay I've missed the call and this sucks but at least I know he's safe I know he's somewhere safe where he was able to try and ring me Um, and that was just you know is a case of counting my blessings was okay that's a confirmation that he's safe Um, and that we were able to email was really great as well. And um, and he when he came home for his R and R, he managed to time it for for, um, for Valentine's, which was really cool. Um, so it was great to have that two weeks solid together. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I use it every day. Right now, we're in a position where um, with the, because of the coronavirus. Um, my husband's a helicopter pilot in the Army Air Corps over here. Okay. And we're meant to be moving in May, um, but I can't see that happening. I don't think we'll probably be moving in. And being pregnant, I'm like keen to get to the next patch and um, and make new friends. But now I have to reflect on it and say, okay, well, even if we could move right now, um, we wouldn't be able to make friends yet because we're all, we'd all have to stay in our, our own homes. Um, but for me, I really wanted to move to be able to sort of get in with the doctors there, make sure my, um, my, cause like this baby, my first baby and this baby will have to come via C-section. So I'm quite, and I was really ill after, um, my first child was born. So I'm really keen to sort of make sure that care is all set up. Right. But although it's sort of frustrating that we're stuck at home, well, I say stuck at home. Um, we are at home together. We're all safe and well. Um, my husband has this secure job, so um, the money is still coming in. It's not really affecting us too badly. Apart from my, my son's three and he's like missing all his little nursery mates and that kind of thing. But it's kind of cool because they're drawing each other little pictures and posting them and enjoying receiving the pictures and that kind of thing. So there are positives and um, yeah, it's giving us that time together to sort of plan the move as well, rather than doing it all at the last minute. So um, yeah, I use, yes. I use the Glad game literally every day. Every uh, day. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so for those that have heard you and you definitely have a wonderful energy and spirit uh, around you, where Thank could you. a person start right now because their name isn't Pollyanna, they they may be hearing this for the first time, and it might be uh, some information that feels like it's an overload on them and the situation that we're in now currently as far as lockdown, things like that. Where could or what could a person do truly to start um, seeing more of the good or to feel glad about the situation they're in right now? Sure, that's a really good question, actually. Um, The way I describe the the glad game is like gratitude journaling in the moment. So it's thinking of all the things that you're lucky to have or grateful to have when the proverbial shit hits the fan kind of thing. So you think, okay, I'm still okay with these basic needs. I think for someone who's never sort of been brought up to think that way, just starting um, a gratitude journal, and even myself, when I hear myself say that, there's a little part of me that goes, oh, yawn, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to write down things that I'm grateful for at the end of each day. I'm already busy doing this and busy doing that, and by the time I got my kids in bed, I just wanna go, you know, and fall asleep. So I appreciate that that is a, it sounds like an extra task to do, but it really pays off. It really, really does pay off. And even if you don't want to actually have a physical diary that you write down um, things in, and I would recommend writing at least three things a day for 30 days in a row, unbroken, try and manage. It's very easy to say, but doing it because life happens, stuff gets in the way. 
um, yeah, to, to do it for 30 days in a row will just sort of help you get into the habit. Um, but you can get apps for your phone. So it doesn't have to be um, a, a actual journal. You can get like Evernote on your phone, which is um, a sort of a, a way of recording ideas and things. And just as you're going along, you know, if you see something cool, like, oh, I don't know, I'm very nature orientated. I'm an out girl, outdoorsy girl. Um, but say a little bird comes and sits somewhere near you and it's pretty, you just whip out your phone, type it in there and remember. And then actually by the end of the day, when you, when you go back to read these things, um, and it can be stuff, stuff like, you know, oh, um, my husband did the washing up with, without being prompted or <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, just to, I think we can so easily overlook little bits of the day, little pockets of happiness. Um, and even if it's just sitting for five minutes and having a cup of tea um, uninterrupted. Um, yeah, there's so many things that, that you can be grateful for. Just turning the tap on, having a shower, you know, being clean, having clean clothes to wear is a privilege that lots of people don't have, you know. Right. Mm. Yeah, I, so, I've definitely, <clears throat> I would definitely say that I have been able to see that in my own life. I do that and the more I find things to be grateful for, then it seems like the more things sh show up in my life that I can be grateful for, or that at least like you said, I, I'm looking for something to be grateful for. So my mind is always looking for something to be grateful for. So that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, going back to your question, I think that would be my number one tip to, to write stuff down and then be able to go back to it. Even I tell you a nice one that I heard the other day was, um, especially for children, is just think of one thing each day and write it on a piece of paper and then put it in a jar. And okay. then at the end of the year, you can read all the things that you were grateful for, um, which is a nice sort of reminder. And then really to flip that on its head if you are in a bad situation and um you're really struggling to find things to be grateful for in the day because you think oh you know everything's so rubbish um i don't know if you've come across gary v but he he uses this in his way of using this technique is quite extreme because he says that he sometimes imagines um that someone that he really loves has been uh, shot or, or killed in an awful accident or whatever and so his is sort of a flip reverse of uh, gratitude because he's rather than saying oh, I'm grateful for this he's sort of saying oh my goodness what would I do without this and mm. then it reminds him why he should be grateful for that because we do like I said before we do take so much for granted so um, thinking of something to imagine having to live without can then make you grateful for it in a different sort of light if you like definitely definitely mm -hmm. that's that's a that's po that's very powerful that's very powerful so and i i encourage all my listeners and people that i know that the power of words are strong but th to start manifesting those words in reality one of the first steps is to think with ink because once you write those words down literally you can see your mind and the imagination of your mind on paper yeah and yeah going back to journaling like just general journaling when you start to write something down you start to get real with yourself because there's part of you that um can catastrophize in your head oh everything's so awful this and that and blah 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 but when you've got to write it down and you think, ah, someone could potentially read this. <laughs> there is that, always going to be that <laughs> element of you that thinks someone could read this. And if you start, sorry to swear again, but if you start bullshitting on paper, you know, you can get away with it in your head. You can say, oh, um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky my husband's awesome, but um, you can say, oh, he never does this and he never does that. Well, really? Does he really never, never do that? Mm. You know, and once you've got to write it down and you think, oh, we might read this and then he'll call me out on it, then you get more real with yourself. And um, yeah, it's it's really a powerful way of um, and, and writing down your goals. You know, actually, do I really want that? Is that really going to make me happy in the long run? Or 
why am I doing that? Who am I doing that for? You know, when, why am I trying to please them? Um, yeah, so writing things down makes you get real with yourself. That's perfect. So briefly, you, you touched on it that you're a life coach. Mm-hmm. How long have you been doing life coaching? If anyone wanted to get in contact, uh, about, like how, how would they do that? Uh, so about four years. Um, so I've got two different websites. One that is for the, um, the Be Glad movement, which is um, just beglad.co.uk. Um, and then for coaching, I'm, I'm actually going to change it around soon because I was focusing on business coaching. Um, but I found, going back to what I was saying earlier, I found that people um, actually end up talking to me a lot more about uh, their personal lives than what's going on in their business because how you feel inside what's going on for you at home um affects everything else that you do anyway so i think i'm going to rebrand that a little bit um but that's polycharnley.co.uk i went for poly rather than pollyanna mostly because i kind of i kind of wanted it to sound a bit more grown up (laughs) (laughs) um But there's still that element of positivity in there. Um, but I guess I'm more, especially with what's going on in the world now, I'm really tuning in even more so than ever to gratitude and kindness. Um, that if you go on social media, there's lots of, oh, you can do this with your kids, or you can do that, or you shouldn't be doing this, and oh, I saw so and so doing that. and. Um, we're either trying to sort of say, oh, aren't we wonderful? Or isn't that person awful, you know? Um, And my granny, uh, she used to say, oh, everybody has a cross to bear, dear, you know? Mm. And what she meant by that was, um, you know, we can never know everybody's full history. We can never know what they've lived through, who has said what to them that has, has struck them deep in their heart. Uh, as they were growing up, what they believe because of either a kind word or a mean word, um, what they believe about themselves, you know, who's done what to them, what has shaped them. Um, You know, just like I might be able to pick up a spider, I can't by the way, but you might not be friends, you might hate spiders and I might like spiders, you might be scared of heights, I might be fine with heights. Um, So it's just not really realistic not fair to ever say well what's wrong with them why should he be unhappy because he's got this and he's got that and he's got x y and z um because you don't know you don't know what he's lived through you don't know what is going on behind closed doors um and you can't make that judgment and unless you are actually that person you can't say whether life is good or bad you know um what's good for you might seem bad to me you know like I said before I'm a country girl but if you're a bit of a, a city slicker that might be your idea of hell to be walking <laughs> through a muddy pool with a dog um so we're also di- we're all very similar but we're also different as well and I think kindness in this day and age is more uh, needed than ever because we're comparing ourselves and I, when I say kindness I mean kindness to other people but kindness to ourselves as well because it's so easy to get online, see what other people are up to and think, oh my goodness, they've been on that amazing holiday. Oh my goodness, they've got a new car or look at her clothes or, you know, or she looks so much prettier than me, whatever, whatever, whatever. And if we compare ourselves, we forget the, the gifts that we have. Um, and so taking that time to turn off the social media. And a, a lot of people talk about having breaks from social media. I think it should be the other way around. I think rather than scheduling time off of social media, we should always be off of it, but schedule time to go on it, you know? Like life shouldn't just happen online. Life should be happening with um, reading books, playing with the kids, um, doing some artwork if you're into that, doing whatever. I think humans are creatives, and if we spend too much time scrolling on our phones and consuming, 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 we're not creating and then because we spent so much time consuming we're kind of like oh my goodness uh they've done so much better than me well yeah because they've been doing stuff and you've just been watching them rather than cracking on and getting stuff done yourself um so yeah i think 
social media is amazing because it's great to be inspired. It's great to see, you know, if, if you are one of these people that can see someone um, building a future for themselves that you would like for yourself, rather than looking and saying, oh, I can't believe they've done it. This isn't fair. Why haven't I done it yet? They're younger than me or they're whatever. And they're, if you can look at them and say, oh my goodness, look at what they've done. If they can do it, I can do it. Then that is much more powerful. So how we consume social media is, is really important. It's something that I'm going to try and teach my son from a, a young age. Um, you know, he's into watching like kids YouTube on the iPad at the moment. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I try not to let him watch too much of it, but uh, at, at the same time, you know, I wouldn't judge any parent for um, using the TV nanny because sometimes you just got to, especially now, if you're going to get on with your other jobs and you've got to do what you've got to do to survive. You know, I don't think it's fair for any of us to judge other. Obviously, there's going to be certain extreme scenarios, but I think people have to do what they have to do to survive. And um, and I, I like to believe that people are genuinely doing their best. You know, even if you're someone who has to go and, I don't know, steal stuff, I'm guessing that you're doing that because you want to provide for your family in some way, shape and form. You know, I, I don't think anyone really wants to be bad naturally. I think it just sort of happens either as a, as a kickback from feeling oppressed or as a, a basic human need that I need to go and get the stuff that I need. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's an awesome that's an awesome introspective and an excellent reminder for myself um because recently i came across that you know on the podcast we're always talking about the power of words and a word that has crossed my life desk um recently that i have seen is the word negative evil dark black those words, black, dark, evil, and negative, or so-called negative and evil, are similar words in our mind that we associate with just evil. And I had to remind myself that there is a positive and a negative on a battery. And, those, mm. and you need both poles in order for that battery to be productive. And then there is a such thing as evil, which would be the definition of a distorted way of describing uh, the words that would describe, you know, a, a distortion of reality, right? Mm -hmm. So not everything that is negative truly is evil. And, yeah. and a lot of times, from my experience, I've seen that I've associated things that may be negative, like a battery, as in evil, as a distortion of what could be the best way I would think. Uh -huh. so, so what would you what would you encourage or inspire a person moving forward that may find themselves tripped up or um, needing more? encouragement and seeing the positives in their life mm, well i think you made a really good point there about the the power of words and the, the stories that we tell ourselves are the the most powerful in our minds you know and we can lie to ourselves in fact one of the um going back to the positive negative one of the uh, first people that i interviewed um a sentence that he said within his interview was um where your um where your shadows lie is often where your power lies because we are full of energy. And like you said, it's positive and negative energy. And if we can um, channel that energy into a positive, you know, um, I don't know if you can remember, maybe it didn't come out in America, but um, Honda had an advert, um, which is like, it's so random. Honda had this advert, it was like a little engine, a diesel engine with wings that was flying through a lovely countryside scene, um, spurting out like um, diesel fumes and, and black smoke. And uh, the song went, hate something, <laughs> make 
something, uh, hate something, change something, make something better. And it was okay. about, yeah, it was about like, if you, if you channel your hate, I was like, I really hate that thing. I mean, hate's a powerful word in itself. Um, and say, okay, well, I'm angry that this is happening. Um, I'm going to use that energy to come up with a better idea, a better way of doing things. You know, I think that particular advert was they'd come up with some kind of green fuel at the time. And as you know, we're now looking towards electric cars and whatnot, aren't we? So, um, yeah, it's about taking their negative energy, but actually using it as a force to spur you onwards. I mean, so many people have said to me, as soon as someone tells me I can't do something, that's when I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to prove them wrong. And so basically they're taking that negative um, energy that someone has sent their way and they're wrapping it up and just throwing it back in their face. You know, actually you say that, but I'm going to, I'm going to prove you wrong. And, um, and kind of a good example of that is, um, you know, my, my dad, uh, both of his parents had died by the time he was 16. And so he, uh, he was from a family of eight uh, siblings um, and there was a bit of a sort of hoo-ha and they all fell out and uh, my dad took himself off and he's like, right, I don't need you guys. I'm going to do this on my own. And he tells the story. I, I left home with 50 quid in my ass pocket and the shirt I had on my back and I pumped diesel in the day and I drove a truck at night and blah, blah, blah. Um, and really the going back to the whole energy side of things, he had the fire under his feet. He had to, you know, he was in a bad situation. He had to make things work. He had to work and make things work. Um, and for us, you know, for me, because because he worked so hard and I, I consider myself a very privileged person um, in so many different ways, um, that I maybe, I don't want to use the word lazy because I've tried a lot of things and I've, I've not, sort of sat on my laurels but I haven't had the same fire under my feet that he, he had so he's used that negative situation to really propel him forward um and whereas some of us when you when you're uncomfortable I mean comfort is a bad place to be in a way you kind of need to get uncomfortable you need to uh, push your boundaries your comfort zone boundaries and um and that's the way you sort of achieve more but um yeah, again, going back to negative and positive situations, one of one of my best friend, Alicia, one of her favorite um, quotes is about you need the darkness to be able to see the stars. And it's so true. This whole yin and yang of life, isn't it? You need to have the negatives to, to appreciate the positives. Um, and, and that's kind of what my podcast is about, really. Um, I'm not ever going to tell someone, oh, you should be grateful that this awful situation has happened or you should invite awful situations in but when you're going through the midst of it if you were going to listen to the, to my podcast and what other people have been through and again it's never to say oh what they went through is so much worse than what you're going through so you're not entitled because going back to what granny said you know everybody has their cross to bear you it's a case of they got through it you can get through it they found the light at the end of the tunnel. You can find the light at the, at the end of the tunnel. Play the glad game. It may feel awful right now, but someday in the future, you're going to be able to draw on the strength that you're building. You know, just like going back to going to the gym. Oh, you're doing all those reps of whatever it is you're doing, and it hurts, you know. But the next time you're in the gym, it doesn't hurt so much. And maybe you're even a bit strong, more stronger. So that, that was bad English, but you know what I mean. So you yeah, and you can yeah. then help someone else, you know. So, um, hey, yeah. that's powerful, Pollyanna. So, one more time, give the people the information of your podcast, where they can find you, or anything else you would like to share with them. Okay, so the um, the podcast is on most major platforms. You can find it on iTunes. Um, and uh, Stitcher and uh, Castbox and all those kind of platforms, and it's called the Be Glad Movement. And then um, the website where I kind of record all the stories as well is called beglad.co.uk. There's a YouTube version as well, which is just youtube.com/beglad. 
um, all the social media, if you search Be Glad Movement, you'll find it on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, and then for coaching, it's Polly Charnley, uh, spelled C-H-A-R-N-L-E-Y dot co dot UK. Okay. Do, put your coaching out there one more time for anybody that will want individual coaching because you gave some powerful words of encouragement and inspiration. Yeah, so the, the coaching is polychanley.co.uk and I just help people reach their goals but make sure they've set the right goals in the first place. That's sort of the main point of coaching. Perfect. And it's a t I tell you what, it's a coaching, um, going back to the whole being bombarded by social media all the time, what you're buying in a way is one-on-one -on -one time to think because I think we're all so busy now. We're all so busy and we're often busy with stuff that really doesn't matter, that isn't fulfilling us. And so you're, when you buy coaching with me or who, with whoever, you are actually buying time to think, to get your thoughts and feelings straight, to examine who you are um, and move forward in a positive way that actually feels true to you rather than um, what someone else is imposing on you. You know, it has to be a goal that is meaningful to you, not something that you're doing to try and please someone else. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I've definitely been pleased by your authenticity and your transparency today. Thank you, I'm glad. And I'm definitely honored that we had a moment to sit down with you and interview you and get some more valuable information some news we can use. Awesome. It's been so much fun. And I feel like I've just waffled and waffled, but um, it's been great fun. So thank you for indulging me. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and words are very powerful. So I intend to have you share your words from a deep place. It, it says that, you know, from your mouth, that your heart speaks. So I definitely felt all your heartfelt words today. And hopefully, if I'm unable to use it, some more people out there that will hear your voice will be able to apply it for their lives as well. Awesome. I hope so. And I'm always available on social media. DM, DM me. If, you, if I can help anyone, I will always try and help someone. So they can always get in touch. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're going to have to do this again very soon, Polly. Awesome. Yeah, that would be cool. I'd love that. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you. Um, thank you for everyone that's listening. Definitely check out Pollyanna at the Be Glad Movement. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye. Cool. Absolutely. I appreciate you, Polly. I appreciate you. That was really good fun. Thank you. It was, I've enjoyed chatting away. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I, like I said, I definitely know the power of words. I'll be um, definitely staying in contact with you more. Um, and this was like kind of like one of my first times doing this. So I'm um, 